Shall we begin? Stock Story is for education and entertainment. It is not financial advice. Please do your due diligence before investing. Hi, it's Doug here. I wanted to welcome you to Stock Story, stockstory.ca, and the YouTube channel for Stock Story. Uh, it's basically a, a diary of my uh, online investing uh, journey that I've been taking, uh, and I wanted to share it with people. Uh, so this is what I'm doing. This is my first video. And uh, I'm just off to get some ice and beer for a karaoke party I'm having tonight. So uh, I look forward to... Uh, posting more of these videos in the future. Thanks. So I've got my beer now. Uh, it's a little heavy. I hope the bag doesn't shake it up, make it all foamy and shit like that. But uh, anyways, also here's a, here's a little bit of background on how I got into self-investing. Cheers. Back in 1999, I uh, joined an investment club uh, with the idea that I was going to learn the stock market. I um, had seen uh, the market going up during the 90s and everything like that. And so I was very curious about getting into it, but I was also very afraid. And so I joined this investment club. We, in 1999, our, our, our portfolio went up 66%. It was, it was an incredible um, feeling that, that, wow, this is a real easy way to make money. Uh, unfortunately, in the next year and two years, actually, uh, what happened was our portfolio lost half of its value. We all ended up losing about forty to fifty percent of our of our original capital that we put in. We all panicked, um, and as a result, uh, we left. Um, we all left, basically cashed in with the big losses, and and really what. What I, I found out later, like when I'm looking at it now, um, uh, a lot of those holdings would have been up anywhere from two, uh, from 100% up to about 500%. And so I guess uh, even after that situation, I had gone on for quite a while and I, I, uh, I did a lot of uh, technical chart reading and uh, with the charts, I, I found myself always... Uh, panicking and getting out all the time. Uh, the chart would break down, things uh, would not go the way the chart patterns were supposed to. And so I was very anxious the whole time I was doing it. So I, around 2008, 2009, there was another crash and I kept thinking, okay, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, eventually I, I, I uh, saw information on Warren Buffett and I read The Intelligent Investor. And when I read The Intelligent Investor, it opened my eyes greatly. Uh, it talks about uh, looking at a stock as uh, a piece of ownership of a business as opposed to uh, just chasing uh, stock prices. And what I did with that was I, I started to realize, okay, I even though I, my background's in physical education and recreation, I did do some classes where I learned how to read balance sheets, learned how to... Um, uh, do cash flow statements and also to look at profit and loss statements. And so uh, the information in The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham, who was the mentor of Warren Buffett, uh, told me that uh, you can, through uh, the cash flows of a business plus their assets, look at what you believe that a company is worth. And then the market is going to give you all sorts of different prices on it and you can... Um, look at and and you have the option to either buy sell or ignore and if the market is giving you a, a price for the stock that's way less than the value of the business then that's probably a great time to buy and if it's overstating what the vet business is worth and you hold it then it's a good time to sell and if it just doesn't make sense for you and you don't hold it uh, just leave it alone so anyways, that's how I originally got into value investing and, and, and started the website stockstory.ca and now I'm looking at doing a YouTube channel and starting to do these videos. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is a, a graph 
And then I'll sort of show you where we were at with that uh, investment club. If you look over here, this is 1999 when we got in. Uh, and probably somewhere around here where the red dot is, that's where we got out. Uh, to explain this graph, it's uh, if you look at the green line, that's the American U.S. economy because uh, when they sneeze, we seem to catch a cold. So uh, I do look at that. Uh, and the blue line is their total market cap for all the stocks in the U.S. And what you can see from this is, uh, in theory, the rate of change of the economy uh, and the rate of change of the stock market should go along the same descent or, or ascent, I should say, not descent. Well, in down market, I guess. But as you can see, the economy generally goes up even, even when you look at 2008, which is right here. The actual drop, which, which was considered a recession, is not near as significant as the drop of the market cap in the blue. So that is is sort of what value investing is about, is uh, taking advantage of times when people are a little exuberant and taking advantage of times when they're really panicking. Uh, we jumped in when everybody was exuberant and we sold out in a panic like everybody else. And that's we're really going against the grain there. Uh, we're going to buy in when uh, stock prices are depressed, valuations are good, and go up to the other thing. So as you can see, we we didn't quite do it right, but it was a great learning experience. Um, and you can also see that we have... Um, I've lost my... Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, anyways, we see we have... Uh, two points. This is the dot-com bubble, this peak. This is the housing crisis in the States. And now we have another situation where it looks like we're being, uh, the markets are being exuberant. Uh, valuations have probably got away from themselves. Uh, so uh, I have been spending most of my time with my portfolio. I have a high percentage of cash, short-term bonds, as well as uh, gold. Uh, as hedges against market crash, uh, because I do believe that the risk is higher when when the the stock market has outpaced the economy this much. So, anyways, here's an example of Bank of Nova Scotia, which was one of our uh, purchases with the investment club. You can see down down in this neighborhood, we bought and sold. Actually, the banks didn't take a big hit in the technology bubble as much, so we actually probably ended up making about $5 a share, but we were selling all of our stocks in, in fear because we were losing so much value in our overall portfolio, just the same as, as would have probably happened here. Uh, one of the things you'll see as we go forward in stock story is that a lot of times when uh, things have crashed, you'll start to see values come up. And when things are, are going really well, the value of stocks is really, really over overstated. And it's time to not necessarily sell out everything, but, but to uh, maybe take some off the table to give yourself more cash for... Uh, inevitable corrections that come forward and as you can see right now bank of nova scotia is up at 71.58 when we bought it at 20 if we'd hung in we would have more than tripled our money as well uh bank of nova scotia has paid a dividend cash to its shareholders uh since the 1800s and i think without fail if they have failed it's like one or two years and most of those years they actually grow the dividend so they make the uh payout higher so so over um the 20 years or so uh that would have been uh, a very significant uh increase on top of that over three times uh, increase in the price of the stock. Uh, actually, I think that's a, an error. This is probably more like 17 years. Uh, but still, the point is, is if we had not panicked, if we were patient, uh, we would have made a lot of money. And I'd call it uh, basically passive income. Uh, not passive, pa pa not passive income, but passive uh, gains uh, in the stock market. Uh, BC is another example. This one's a more of an example where we bought we bought 
in 1999 and probably bought in the or sold in the panic around 30 or 25 dollars uh losing a significant amount of capital on that one and these were the easier ones because we were also bought into some of the tech stocks on the nasdaq which would have lost half their value um and so uh we basically our group wanted to pack it in and get out which uh if we'd stuck around we you know 17 years later we would have made some money uh but this is just a, a total example of the same thing. Here's the actual 17 years. It's now $60, so it would have approximately doubled, and uh, we would have had a growing dividend over 17 years, so we'd be getting a, a paycheck in pretty regularly. So if we'd been patient, this would have been a really cool thing. Um, so anyways, just going to wait for this guy. Okay, what lessons did I learn from all of this? Well, the first thing is that the markets often operate on emotions in the near term. And that's where I learned that value investors try to work uh, to take advantage of those emotions. And uh, when the emotions are really negative, that's when the value comes out in a lot of equities. And it's a great time to buy. Uh, and it is going away from the rest of the crowd because everybody else is panicking and selling. It's not easy to do, actually. Uh, it's also wise to manage my portfolio for safety in overvalued markets. So when I see that it's the the market is really like outpaced uh, the the economy, I want to I want to make sure that I have uh, cash, short term bonds, gold, or other hedges that will help reduce if there is a big correction or crash or whatever. It will reduce. Uh, the amount of downdraft on my portfolio. Um, I can usually tell this also from the fact that when I start looking for stocks that are of good value, less and less of them are available. Uh, currently, right now, uh, we saw on the graph that uh, the the market caps have outpaced the um, GDP growth or the economy by quite a bit. And you also find now that uh, the P ratios of the overall stock market are on the high side historically. And so they're generally overvalued. And uh, at some point, you just never know the timing of it. Uh, we are due for a correction. Um, with good companies and good financials, I learned I must be patient. Um, sometimes it takes a while for the market, for all the short-term fluctuations. There are so many people in the market, really, that uh, you have people day trading, you have uh, high-speed computers trading milliseconds, uh, you have people that are momentum traders, you got, you got people doing all sorts of different things in there, and you have people who every time they hear a little bit of news, uh, they're reacting to it positively or negatively, making it volatile. But in the long run, if you have a good company with good financials that you bought at a fair price and you're patient, uh, you, a person should do well. Uh, at least that's what I've learned and that's what I'm following right now. Um, and always try to buy companies at a discount to their intrinsic value. And I'll talk about this on another video, but basically you're going to look at the value of the assets plus the value of the earnings and try to figure out what the what what the price of the company should be worth per share and then look for times when the market is selling at a discount to that because it's a great time to buy. Um, and sometimes value isn't available and you have to wait. Uh, a couple of famous investors, one, one guy that I follow, David Tepper, has had a phenomenal record over the last 15 years, including over the crash, is compounded probably at like 27% a year. Uh, he says sometimes the hardest thing to do is wait, but that's what you have to do. Uh, Warren Buffett has often told the folks at Berkshire or, or in his partnerships in the early years uh, that uh, they can't find anything to buy. In fact, with his old partnerships that he did in the early days uh, when he was a younger man, uh, he actually gave the money back to everybody when the market was, as he felt, too overvalued because he said he didn't know what to buy with their money and thought they'd be better off just having it. So anyways, um, just a little bit of information about the Stock Story blog. Um, 
it started out as a blog, but I'm moving it more to a vlog. I think I'm going to prefer doing this kind of thing that I'm doing right now uh, once I get more used to it. Uh, but on the blog, there is, is a, a start here section that I'm not sure if I'll catch up on the videos. So if you want, you might want to go there at www.stockstory.ca. And uh, it, at, in the start here section, it covers the following. It talks about the site. So it'll tell you the different things that you can go to on the site to go look at um, uh, stories that have been written or in the future been videoed. Uh, it also tells about me and my history. I told you a little bit about it in this video. Uh, it'll probably go into a little bit more detail on some of the stuff that uh, I was doing at that time. Uh, it's a good way to figure out you know, why I am where I'm at right now. Uh, I'll talk, and this will probably be my next video, is why I invest for myself. Uh, bit, one of the biggest reasons is, is uh, mutual fund fees, management fees that are charged. Um, uh, but there are a number of other reasons, and I'll put together a, a video on that. Uh, also talk about budgeting and savings so that you have money to invest. Uh, also talk about uh, how you know, the different online brokerage accounts that are available, people, uh, uh, I'm focusing on Canada in this particular situation. So uh, if you're from another country, um, it may not be suitable. It may or may not cover off your stuff, but, but similar kind of thing. You should do some research and find out about that. Uh, and then I talk about my investing strategies, uh, t which I've alluded to here, which include uh, uh, managing my portfolio allocations for safety in overvalued markets, uh, and also buying at discounts to intrinsic value on, on, on stocks that I buy. After the start here section, I cover a number of topics, updates on how I'm managing my investments, how I get my information, and what I'm trying or planning. And I hope to share and have you know, if you're, if you're doing an online investing yourself right now, it'd be great to hear from you and hear your comments and ideas. Uh, if you're thinking about starting this out, this might be a great way for you to see uh, my successes, things that haven't worked so well for me, and just get sort of an idea. So, so you don't necessarily have to start from square one. You can see some of the things that uh, have worked or not worked for someone else when you start to do your due diligence uh, to look at doing it yourself. So how have I been doing? Uh, this year, not that great. I got 3.42% return, which is not uh, outstanding by any means. It's a little bit behind the S&P and a lot behind the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, I, oh yeah, I still got my dot. But if you look here, uh, the four previous years have averaged just shy of 13%, which has been, once again, a little bit behind the S&P, uh, but has been way more than the Toronto Stock Exchange has been. So if you average me out, even including uh, a a weaker year-to-date return in 2016. I'm I'm significantly up on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and I'm a little bit behind the S&P. But as as I said before, uh, I, since since 2013, I've had uh, anywhere from 35 to 45 percent of my portfolio in cash, short-term bonds, or some type of bonds, uh, and sometimes in gold because I do feel that it's overvalued now. And when you do that, you don't, the opportunity for as big a gains aren't there. So I'm pretty happy with the way things are going considering I'm hedged so much. And if we ever do get a significant correction in the next little while, uh, I will benefit from it greatly, I believe, and, and outperform the uh, indexes. Uh, if I can uh, not have as much downdraft in the correction and manage to buy a lot of things at really good value. Uh, one thing about the index is they don't hedge at all. They're just fully invested all the time. So in an up market, if I'm hedging, I'm not going to beat them. But uh, if I can stay close to them or 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 beat them, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The, the, this information is for 2016, the close of the market on October 31st. So there we go. We had a fun time last night with karaoke. Uh, 
There's the mixer. Oops, I'm not very good with this camera. Yeah, the mixer and the speakers. Yeah, we had a fun time. We sang some cool songs, had a great time. Uh, hope the information on this video was of some interest to you and you'll come back to hear uh, or look at some of the new video posts that I'll put out. It's taking me a while to edit this. I'm learning. I hope to get these things out a lot quicker and get a lot more information out to everybody. Please give me your comments, uh, questions, uh, feedback, whatever. I, I would love to hear from you. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye. Please leave your comments, your likes, subscribe. If you're new to investing and have questions, please put them in here. Uh, I'll try to get back to people, at least for the first week after a video comes out. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a few outtakes. Uh, had troubles actually looking in the lens of the camera. I seem to want to look at my image all the time. So anyways, hope you all are having a good day and we'll talk to you later. Bye now. Okay, so I'm here and I'm taking a look at what I'm doing. I can see myself, so hopefully that um, helps me, although I can tell I'm glancing at myself, which isn't really a good thing. Uh, but I'm hoping that this is a little more direct into the camera. I, I think the short stick's the only way I can do this. I just look over at the camera, I gotta stop doing that, or over at the image. Um, but, what I want to say is that uh, maybe I can learn to do this. I think the short stick's the way I got to do it. I can go over again. I got to stop doing that. I got to keep talking to the G and the Samsung because that's really where uh, the camera is. So uh, it's silhouetted this way, so I probably should not be looking that way. This way is not bad. Uh, I looked over at the camera again, but uh, I'm going to get better at this. I, I will work hard. Okay, bye bye. Maybe this will work. Um, I'm hoping it will because uh, I think it is best that I look into the thing. I don't know if I should be closer, like so. If that's the case, then I'll know that. If I need to be really close, that's really close. Probably shows my ugly, wrinkly face. If I go further out, I need to turn this a little bit, but um, I'm still looking in that particular direction. Um, I need to look so that I can see myself a little bit so that I at least know that I'm there, that I'm in the middle of the screen because for some reason that's important to me and <laughs> God knows, uh, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, impulsive disorder I have or something. <laughs>